All right, welcome to the second episode of Dog Talk and Coffee with me, Richard Hines. And today's subject is going to be never, ever use a harness or dog treats when trying to teach your dog to walk properly. Why? Here's a perfect example. During our training walk is that it becomes familiar to her. If I were to just keep going and ever walk like this in a neighborhood setting, we didn't get very far at all. I was hoping we could walk past a few houses. She's not there yet. I'm not gonna continue to insist on failure out of her. We'll wait until she matures a few feet of tether. That's not what we selected for when we made Dawn. It's a very unnatural skill to When she pays attention to me periodically, I'll go ahead and reward her. But right now, see how she's just pulling ahead. I don't like that at all. Inertia, come on, let's go. Let me see if I can get her over here. Inertia, sis. Inertia, come. Oh, unsuccessful there. This is gonna be a bit of a challenge here, and that's okay. I welcome a challenge. There's some goo on the ground over here. I have no idea what it is. It looks gross, and she's trying to get to it. But that's the real world. Things are not going smoothly here at all. Not in a reliable manner yet. Inertia, leave it alone. Leave it. Leave it alone. Whoa, that's exactly the kind of excessive pulling I want to discourage. See, excessive pulling, we'll go back the other way. Right as she starts to pull, I stop and I kind of anchor the leash right here to my hip. From what I'm seeing here, we have a really long way to go before she's trained to adequately walk on a sidewalk like this. See if we can get her to not pull all the way to that door. That's kind of ambitious. Do you know that I have chicken right now? You don't care, okay, well maybe not. Okay, we'll cancel the leash walking session because that's just going to make her frustrated. I'm going to go ahead and pick her up to minimize the pulling because she's very likely to pull all the way over here. That's a good example of just testing the water, seeing how receptive your dog is to training in a given moment. Experience tells me not to force that lesson. There'll be plenty of opportunities to practice that in the future. And I'm not going to force it because she's unlikely to comply. So I'm putting her in a lesson that she is not yet prepared for. Look at this. See? Look how instantly wild she gets because she's like, I know where we are. Hey, Tahoe. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, clearly you can see here in, in those video clips that the harness is just letting the dog pull everywhere. And unless the tra this trainer pulls and tries to get its attention away from going forward, there is no hope. All right? So, I mean... There's absolutely no focus, begging, I mean trying so hard with treats. Hey, 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 look, 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 look what I have. Right? You can clearly see the dog has no interest in the treats while it's outside in the public environment. Get over here. Inertia. Sis. Inertia, come. Oh, unsuccessful there. This is going to be a bit of a challenge here, and that's okay. I welcome a challenge. Do you know that I have chicken right now? You don't care. Okay, well, maybe not. Just like I brought up in the last video of showing one of the top positive experts in the world that three years later of three years straight of positive dog training, still can't get their dog to listen when the dog wants something else. All right, so now here we are. We're out by the pool. So we're gonna attempt to do a little bit of an obedience session right here next to the pool. This is too much for Sonny. Sonny, no? Sonny, sit, sit, yes. Sonny, down. Yes. Hey, Sonny. Sonny, yuck. So you notice he's not into this right now. He doesn't really want to train. He wants to get on that pool. This is an environment that I shouldn't be training in yet. Sonny, come here. He's going to pee on stuff because there's other dogs out here. I've got treats in my hand right now. He's not even following a lure. <laughs> he's shying away from the food because he wants to go to the pool. 
So I only did this to show you an example of an environment that is too hard to train right now. That dog wanted to go to the pool and no matter how much treat the trainer has, common sense <laughs> will tell you, and I have said this forever, if you're going strictly positive and you're going to try to do this route, good luck with that. You are going to have a long, long, long journey on trying to get your dog to focus, pay attention, and actually learn the exercises. Harnesses. The worst training tool ever invented for the public's dogs, right? For training, okay? So, I understand, I hear it every day for years and years and years and years and years. I know why most people go to a harness, right? The dog on a regular collar, <laughs> right? I know. That's why you switch to a harness because the dog was gagging itself out when you had a regular collar on it when you would walk it. I got that. I know. You don't have to tell me. I have millions of clients in my career that this is exactly why everyone moves to a harness. Now, you're caught in a little situation here. So, yes, if you are not going to seek a trained dog and you don't care about being pulled around, you don't care that your dog doesn't listen to you, right? Meaning you don't want training. You don't care what your dog does. You're not seeking a trained dog. Then by all means, use a harness, right? To let them pull you all over, disrespect, right? And be safe here, right? Because obviously with regular collars, most people, because they don't try to train their dogs, they let them pull everywhere and do what they want and think that's normal, right? That the trachea can get damaged by the constant ah, 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 by pulling you down the rough blocks, right? So yes, if you are not seeking training, then the better choice is to go to a harness to comfort your dog to pull you everywhere right and let them just do what they want with you okay so if you are seeking training and you actually want them trained you can never use a harness right because harnesses are meant for comfort of the dog to pull hard so that there's no consequence and no corrections obviously right again common sense so what were harnesses made for to pull things that's what they were created for they were not created in the beginning of this for the pet dog they were created for working dogs right to get sled dogs to be able to pull with comfort and just pull everywhere with good push with no corrections protection work, right? We need for dogs to be comfortable to do bite work, learn how to bite people, right? The harness comes in for frustration, right? When we're teasing them like that and we get better bites, stronger bites because harnesses cause frustration <sighs> because they can pull, no consequence right they can really dig in there so harnesses are meant for frustrated chaotic behavior which in turn goes to our advantage makes them do things more and stronger pulling harder right to get what they want it causes a frustrated mind
So that is the main purpose of the harness. Frustration to create better momentum things, faster, more desire, right, on the hunt, right? Again, hunting people, looking for narcotics, you know, bite work, sled pulling, cart pulling, any of that that the dog needs to just pull, right, freely and have its way with an object or a human on the end of it not meant to teach the public how to walk their dogs in public. Okay, okay we'll cancel the leash walking session because that's just going to make her frustrated. I'm going to go ahead and pick her up to minimize the pulling because she's very likely to pull all the way over here. That's a good example of just testing the water, seeing how receptive your dog is to training in a given moment. Experience tells me not to force that lesson. There'll be plenty of opportunities to practice that in the future. And I'm not gonna force it because she's unlikely to comply. So I'm putting her in a lesson that she is not yet prepared for. Look at this, see? Look how instantly wild she gets because she's like, I know where we are. Hey, Tahoe. <laughs> Disaster. The worst thing you can ever do, right? That was the purpose of the harness. So, I mean, we got problems all over the place with this method and this technique that this kid is using, right? I mean, it's a train wreck. <laughs> I mean, I just don't even know what to do with myself right now because of this whole mess that I'm seeing and ugh. Oh, wow. Now, if you stop.
Good. Good girl. Very good. Till next time, Richard Hines, Miami Dog Whisperer.